that the Lord has so praise God. We worship adoration and admiration. Jehovah. We want to go into a session of thanksgiving, prayer of thanksgiving. We want to thank God for the gift of life because only the living, the living can praise him. Let's give him thanks for this opportunity that we've seen yet another day. A, be a beautiful day that God has made. Thank God that while we slept, no matter what happened, thank you. We are thank wide you. awake now. We can move, we can talk, we can even join this meeting. Let's give him praise. Let's give him thanks. Father, we just want to thank you for the gift of life. We do not take it for granted, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for even giving us sound sleep, oh God, for refreshing our spirit, soul, body, and mind. We just want to bless your holy name, oh God. We know how far you've brought us, O oh God, and where you are leading us to. Because your word says that Christ in us, the hope of glory. So, Lord, we just want to thank you. We thank you for how far you've brought us, O oh God. When we look back even two years ago, 30 years ago, how many years ago, we see your faithfulness, your loving kindness in our lives. We just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, not just how far you brought us, but where you are taking us, because you're a God of plan and of purpose, oh God. Everything that you do, oh God, you have you have a plan, oh God, and a purpose for it. So Lord, we just want to thank you. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, because you will continue to lead us, oh God, all right. And Lord, we want to thank you for our individual lives, oh God. Wherever we are, wherever we are, oh God, at this point in time, we just want to give you thanks, oh God. That, Lord, we are not just a number, oh God, because your word says even the very years of an hair are numbered. How much more we who are made in your image. So we just want to thank you. We just want to thank you for our individual lives. And also we thank you for our families, oh God. We thank you for our nuclear families, our extended families, our in-laws, oh God. Our families in general, oh God, even on the wholesome parenting community, we just want to thank you for families. Because your word says that even you said, even the lonely, oh God, in families, oh God. So we just want to thank you for the gift of families, oh God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We do not take it for granted, oh God. Wherever you've placed us, oh God, is for a purpose, is for a plan. So we thank you for our families. We thank you for everyone in our families. We also want to thank you for our communities, oh God. Our neighborhood, our school, our churches, oh God. Even the GP we visit, oh God. Everything in our community, oh God. The street, the, our neighborhood, our neighbors, oh God. Even the people that pass by, the cleaners, whatever they do. We just want to thank you for our various communities oh god we want to thank you for our children's schools our educational settings oh god we just want to thank you god for our towns for our cities for our countries for the nation where we belong oh god where you've placed us all oh god all over the world we just want to thank you we want to thank you for your faithfulness we want to thank you for watching over us oh god and even keeping our city and community save oh god and lord we want to thank you for the whole wide world oh god you have your the world in your hands oh god in the palm of your hands oh god because you are a mighty god oh god you have everything in your hands oh god everybody everyone in this whole world oh god you have us all in your hands oh god and we know that lord you continue to preserve us oh god we commit nations that are at war that lord you will bring peace oh god because you are jehovah shalom the god of peace we lift up our government before you oh god because the king the heart of kings are in your hands and like a water course you will direct it to where you please so lord we just want to thank you we want to thank you oh god we want to thank you for situations in the world because we know that lord everything is in your hand lord also we want to thank you for our children your word says that children are the heritage of the lord and the fruit of the womb, your reward, oh God. We want to thank you for children, oh God. Thank you for blessing us with every one of them, oh God. We commit them into your hands, oh God. Those in the fold, oh God, even outside the fold, that Lord, they are your children. You have a plan and purpose for every child on this earth, oh God. We commit them into your hands. We say, have your way. No matter what age they are, oh God, from zero to hundred, oh God, they are still children. We say, Father, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Let your plan, let your purpose be done, oh God. We thank you for parents, oh God. Ah, Father, thank you, oh God, because you have a plan and a purpose, oh God, in placing us as parents, oh God, over these children, oh God. That Lord, you will teach us, all right? You give us the wisdom, the understanding of everything that we need to know we thank you for educators oh god our teachers oh god lecturers oh god we thank you for educational settings oh god that lord you visit oh god you visit each educational settings oh god and do that which you have purpose and plan to do in jesus name we also want to thank you for this wholesome parenting community hope oh god that lord have your way take absolute control in jesus name and father we commit today's session into your hands we say that lord only you can do all things and we say blessed be your name oh god for in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining. Good morning. You are welcome to the Wholesome Parenting Community Hub. Here we, we are a community of people from different walks of life. 
And we also believe that children are the heritage of God and we as parents, as guardians and educators need to train them well. We also believe that it takes a wholesome community to raise just one child to make that child awesome. And here at the Awesome Parent Community Hub, we hold at least one session every month. So you're welcome to join us at every, uh, every month in Jesus' name. We are on different social media where we post um, videos of sessions that are coming up and uh, coming up events. So thank you for joining. God bless you. Um, so without taking too much of our time, we just, in case, I'm sure some of us have seen it, but we just want to share the um, basis for like a case scenario for what we are doing today so that um, we are all on the same track. So please bear with me while I share my screen. It's just a short advert. So that was just the a little intro into what we have today. And if you are not able to read everything, it's always that um, you can view it at the end of the video. So to um, the first, actually there are three um, speakers today, one main speaker and a pre-recorded um, video of um, two other speakers. So I'm do going to share the first video for the first speaker, please bear with me. <laughs> uh, praise God. Our first speaker for today is, um, I call her sister, but she's uh, Mrs. Abiola Gumbote, mother and grandmother who loves and enjoy working with children. She's a nursery practitioner with over 20 years experience. She has also been a Sunday school teacher and coordinator in Old, um, Redeemed Christian Church of God, our, uh, Holy Ghost Zone for more than 20 years. She enjoys cooking, taking long walks and singing. And one of the memories I have is a, a young boy, a mother came to us one day and said that, I want to know what you people put in your sandwich. My boy says that um, um, the sandwich in church is different from the sandwich you make at home. The sandwich in church is, is tastes uh, better and we just laughed because sister Bella does have a way of doing her own sandwich and she had to give out a little secret of how to make the sandwich better so you know that she does have a lot of experience <laughs> in the Sunday school and with um, teaching children so um, I'll go to the video for today this is our, um, her view on raising boys so She's also on the platform, Sister Biola, you're welcome. God bless you, Ma. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Ma. So we go to... What are they? Shalom, everyone. Welcome to the Wholesome Parenting Community Hub. Here at the Wholesome Parenting community hope we believe that children are God's heritage and we need to train them well we also believe that it takes a whole community to it, sorry it takes a wholesome community to raise one awesome child this May session will be looking at the topic raising boys how are we supposed to raise our boys what are the qualities that our boys need to become great and successful men I have with me today my dear sister Sister Abiola Ogumbote. Um, she 
she and we've been working together at um, our church for over 20 years. I've known her for over 20 years and we've been in a good working relationship with children. So she's going to be, she's here today to um, talk to us about how to raise our boys because she has raised four boys uh, who are now men. So she has quite a lot of experience and wealth of knowledge. So without taking much of our time, I'd like to welcome you, Sister Abiola Ogumbota, into this um, May session. And the first question I will ask is that, please, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Thank you, Ma. Yeah. Hello, good morning. My name is Abiola Ogumbote. I'm a nursery practitioner. I work at St. Thomas's uh, day nursery hospital um, and um, I have four boys and I've been working with Sashulakwe for over 20 years now. She's been a good leader when we're at uh, student section. Thank you Ma. So you can see that she does have a wealth of experience from not just raising her own boys but she's been working in the child um, care setting and she also works in the children's section so she has quite a lot of, lot of experience. My next question, man. What has been your experience in the way boys have been raised, either as a, a sister, a mother, or grandmother? Yeah, my own views ab about bringing up boys is not by my power or by God's grace, because I have to use some of the experience that I learned when I was living with my auntie before I got married. So it really helps me a lot. I always let my children know that housework is not only for women, it's mm -hmm. for both women and men, and always remind them that they have to share the housework with their wives and their children when they grow, when they get married. Mm, that's interesting. Um, I like that because there are some people that will say, oh no, house chores is only for girls. The boys should not do that. But thank God mm -hmm. we've heard from her now that yeah. boys should also be involved in house chores. House chores. Yes, that's very good. And mm -hmm. my next question, Ma, what qualities do you think a boy, especially a black boy, needs to make it in life? Yeah, when they were young, the black boys, yeah. Yeah, I, sorry about that. I think boys, especially black boys, need positive role, role model, to look up to, to look up to, to make it in life, they need to know of the hard work, dedication, and sacrifice involved in order to be rewarded, you know, great, great, uh, greatly. Also, I believe they need to be surrounded with friends that are like them too. It's important. It's, it's important for boys. Boys are not neglected. It's important that boys are not neglected to get, to just do whatever they like. Instead, they need to be guided and supported to help them stay in a track to achieve their goal and target. Okay, well, so you've mentioned that um, boys should not be neglected so that when parents... Yes, what do you mean by that now? Yeah, it's like um, sometimes, you know, parents will be thinking that um, boys, uh, let, 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 me leave, let me leave the boys and do whatever he, uh, he likes. Yeah. But it shouldn't be like that. When they are not, you know, intact or they are not listening to the parents, they need to do, you know, have, because, I, you know, some people say them, they like to hold children with a soft and uh, talk or soft uh, boys boys need hard dating you know you have to hold them tight you have to be firm with them mm. but sometimes they really need it because my children sometimes when i start shouting they'll say oh mom don't shout i say well if you don't want me to shout do whatever i want uh, you know i like you to do mm. and that is it okay that's interesting that's interesting because really like you said some people because they think oh a girl, I have to watch a girl. Yeah, watch a girl. I don't want her to get pregnant or do this. But they don't know that even the boys too, boys. they need yeah. to, be, to be watched over. And yes, like you said, with firm hand. Firm hand does not necessarily mean beating, but firm hand you know. is that you are very disciplined with them. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you, ma. And then um, the, my next question, ma. 
Do you think boys should be raised differently from girls? No. Boys shouldn't be treated differently because when it comes to responsibility and hard work, it's a plus for both of them. As a child, is actually as a child is growing is growing up it's always important for them to be responsible for their action which will greatly help them to become a better person in a, as an adult mm. official it really helps okay because that's interesting because i know that in some families they don't allow boys to do like kitchen work housework yeah. housework they tell them no that when you are in your own house, you'll be the head and your wife will be doing that. No. Mm. no the, the, nowadays, it shouldn't be like that. It, that's the, that's holding this style. Mm. And we don't use it now. Okay. Why, Ma? Why don't we use that old style anymore? Because it's like uh, all the work, all the housework is upon the girls, it's upon mm. their wives. The wives have to take care of the children and uh, to, to look after the house. And the wife too is you working. Mm. And the men will just go to work and come back and stretch their legs, and their wife will be cooking and be going up and down like you. That's why a lot of women they don't live long. Mm. They get sick as a you know as a young age. It's, it shouldn't be like that at all. Mm. That's very interesting because in uh, in the olden days, women didn't go to work; they stayed at home. So they yeah, were still at home to do the cooking and everything. But now, yeah, almost now. every woman. Even if yeah, you're not going to work, even the work in the house with children and everything it's, it's, is enough. It's, it's enough. Yeah, it's enough. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, ma. Okay. Um, my um, last question. Do you think a boy should learn how to cook, clean, take care of their environment? And why? Why should they learn all those things? After all, they are the men in the house, so they should be free to do whatever they like no no although it's not easy because i have i have to be reminding my own children every time that they need to learn how to cook even when they were going to university i have to teach them you know to cook their own meal that they, they can't be you know they can't be buying takeaway all the time yeah. and they need to you know clean take care of their house cook for if, if they can share the cooking because um they, i have my firstborn and his wife they share the cooking you know when it's uh, my, my son's turn he, he will do the cooking and tidy up the kitchen and that's how it should be, be that's how it should be so they need to look after their environment as well it's not only women yeah. because when they have their own house they should be able to look after their house look after their children and their wife as well Okay. we all need you know to help each other it's not only women that should be doing all this thing on their own okay w one more question ma because of where we are from as africans most people uh, uh maybe it's olden days also because most yeah. people think ah uh, it's not it's not in my place as the head of the house to be doing that it's the wife that should do all that even raising boys should it be just for the mother to do all both father and no. mother no we have to be both parents okay you have to be both parents so we have to raise them up together because sometimes the children they you know they wash their parents mm. and when, when when you are doing a good thing the children will follow as well but when parents are not really good i, I didn't say good not good but is what you are doing that your children you know we we study and they will be doing it mm. and we have to show them the good way of life okay so that when they grow up they, they their children too will learn from them mm, that's very interesting thank you so much man and mm. finally how has it been raising four boys i'm sure it's a lot of hard work and and like you said mm. shouting and screaming <laughs> i don't beat my children but i do shout a lot because okay. when 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 i said tell them to do something and they don't do it then i will say please if uh, you know i will scream and be calling them can you come here please and come and clear this kitchen if you want me to cook today <laughs> if you don't if you don't if you don't clear the kitchen i'm not cooking at all so when they hear that they will quickly rush up so that is why we do the rotor so the, the person that is next to do oh. the cleaning uh, clearing of the kitchen 
they will clear it and uh, the, uh, the person who is going to tidy up their room they will do it yeah. but now they are men you know they do their own things now but when they are little I have to and by yeah. god's grace and you know i thank god for the strength and the power that the lord gave me to do all these things uh, that's very interesting i like that aspect of the rotor because mm -hmm. it won't just be one person doing it but mm -hmm. all of yeah. them doing it it's, for, it's all of them yeah okay thank you so much ma we are grateful okay. for this and god bless you god will continue to reward Amen. your good work Amen. whether at Amen. home at work Amen. or ministry in every area of your life Amen. in jesus name Amen. i'm so grateful but thank Amen. you very much for this opportunity and you ma yeah thank you very much such luck we really appreciate that and you are doing a great job for the community may the lord help you Amen. and strengthen you more and more in jesus name amen amen thank you Praise God. Thank you. That was my um, interview with um, Sister Abelogun, but it was really, in it's interesting because I did learn a lot and not just learn a lot, but it's also um, re-echoing to my mind the things that sometimes I think, am I doing the right thing? Like that aspect of um, doing, the, um, letting boys cook, doing the rota and things like that and screaming because I thought maybe I'm not too patient with my bo uh, with my boys. But she has four boys, so you can imagine her being in the house with four boys. And, you know, I, I've learned a lot from her. So um, we go to the next video. Um, sorry, we still have the main speaker, but we do have other um, speakers. So I'll just quickly share our profile. And the next... Um, Speaker is um, Sister Funke Adeyinka Adioye. She's the coordinator and founder of Treasure of His Eyes Ministry International, a ministry dedicated to supporting, encouraging, and empowering single parents and their children. I'm uh, quickly going to a uh, video because uh, because of time, and she's been on the um, Awesome Parenting Community Hub. Well, I'm sure this is a third time or so and we always enjoy our session so i'll quickly go straight into our session hi everyone my name is Ali Funke Adiri. i'm on the wholesome parents group to talk about um, raising boys and the kind of relationship i've had with boys or should i say men or young men i i, I have a son myself and i have six brothers in total <laughs> I'm one of the two girls between the six brothers I have three brothers in front of me and three brothers right behind me my experience um, on how boys have been raised or my experience on how children have been raised which I've raised a boy myself and of course I've lived I've I've lived with, with um, six boy siblings and apart from living with six boy siblings you can imagine if you have six boys in the house the amount of boys that will be in your house at a given time my take on how to raise a boy would be non different from how you raise a girl I, I would say particularly even a special attention should be paid to how should be paid to how we raise our boy children because most of the time and most um, most families actually raise boys as being superior to girls that is what I've noticed of course because I have six brothers I've noticed that it, it does happen in my family and I've seen it happen in another family that I'm close to that most of the time the girls are made to do every chores the girls are trained to do everything in the house the girls are trained to to be obedient to be respectful to do everything diligently and properly but sometimes if you notice the boys actually get away with not doing most of these things uh, my own experience of raising a, a, a son is I've raised my son the same way I've raised my daughter and amazingly I would say my daughter is more of a man or a boy than my son she is more of a macho person but my son is more of a solemn person but even in his solemnness I have to be very aware I have to be very observant I have to notice I have to keep tab on him because most boys really I think is a natural inborn thing feels they're superior 
to all the other to, to girls and they're superior also in doing a lot of things at home when you ask them to do something they don't find it really easy to do but i've trained both my children the boy and the girl in every proper way that i would train any child though sometimes pay special attention to the boy because i understand a man is the head of the home when they grow so i have always take that into cognizant in training my son in all fairness i would say i don't see training a black boy differently from training any other kind of boy i think in, in the perspective we need to get that right straight away saying every child is a child every boy is a boy every man is a man the point that now de determines what they become is the training that we give them i would say every black boy because one thing also with black young people and black boys is as black people we're more aggressive we're more um action feel so sometimes when we try to differentiate between a white and a black person that might get in or a black and any other color person and always my advice to younger boys especially black boys is that all the um ejaculation all the aggressiveness all the way that we would normally talk as black people and it would not mean anything abusive rude or insultive cannot be done when you're dealing with other culture because our culture our ways and manners of life are not that kind of um it's kind of a bit too loud for some kind of setup so i would always say black boys especially should be trained in mannerism in understanding the environment and actually environmental intelligence it's very important for our boys which sometimes i think we don't do we, we just leave our boys and our boys sometimes believe they can do as they please they can express themselves i am not against people expressing themselves but i'm saying like emotional intelligence is very important so is um, environmental intelligence very important because you would notice most of the time black boys are sanctioned into special need into mental homes not because they have mental trouble or mental issues it's because of the aggression seemingly aggression that when you're in a black environment with a black setup it might not be seen as, as an aggression it might be seen as a way of life but when it's in another culture another environment it can actually be used against a black boy as a as a way of um, sanctioning or locking them up where they're not supposed to be so my own advice to black boys is to study the environment have the understanding of the environment and apply env environmental intelligence in this case i don't think boys should be raised differently from girls when it comes to home training, when it comes to mannerism, when it comes to the way of life. I know in certain things, a man might need to mentor a man, a man might need to mentor a boy and a woman might need to mentor a girl. Take for example, when it comes to things of puberty, things of the hormonal changes, that might be a different story. But when it comes to home training, respect, um, actually, able to regard and respect environment expect respect individual and behave and comport themselves i don't think any child should be um, should be trained differently because we are all human beings we are all created by god male or female should not determine that a child should be treated or trained differently the only thing i will have is men sometimes and boys what i've noticed in living with boys and living with um, my own son as well is they're not very observant sometimes i don't mean this in a derogatory manner they think differently so take for example there might be something on the floor a girl would probably see and pick up a boy will walk right across it why i've tried to do this i've tried to understand it i would ask question did you see what you've just passed through and they say I didn't see it so sometimes in those aspects of life you might need to pay special attention to boys to ensure that they are doing what they're supposed to do and they're able to multitask which a woman sometimes or generally would do without even thinking so that's the only way i think we need to pay special attention to our boys but apart from that training them in every other aspect of life i think should be done 
the same way being a boy or being a girl because we're preparing all of them for the future do i think a boy should learn how to cook definitely yes a boy should learn how to do everything relating to the home when i was growing up in secondary school we have a, a, a class called home economics and we have boys in our class i think my my, my brothers at least five of them i would say or four of them can cook better than i can and they are boys they grew up in the same house with me the point is you need to train a child either a boy or a girl to know everything to know everything to have understanding of everything what about if a man gets married and the wife goes out to work or goes on a trip would that man just sit in the house or keep spending to buy takeaways so my take on this is every child be it a man be it a woman should know how to cook should know how to clean should know how to do everything i remember even when i was growing up my father used to cook for us so in my own opinion every child it doesn't matter if you're a man if you're a woman if you're a boy if you're a girl should know how to do everything relating to domestication they must be well domesticated in every aspect because you know sometimes when you're well domesticated it brings about regard and respect for the environment so i think a boy or girl should not make any difference in the training that will give our children hi everyone my name is ali from Kaduri. um we just have to stop that video for now I hope we've all um, learned something from that. And the one I am so, so grateful for is what she mentioned about observation. And my mind is thinking, yes, there should be a class called Observation 101 for boys. <laughs> God help us all. God help us all. And we'll go straight into the speaker for today. And I'll quickly share our profile. Um, she is Mrs. Um, Isoke Adigun, aka Soki. She's been happily married for, um, for over 25 years and a mother of four boys. Three of them are now adults and a princess. She's also an um, ordained minister in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. She works with children, teens, and young adults. She has held different roles over 30 years as a trained children's church teacher and a coordinator. Aside from ministry work, um, Soki does charity work through an organization called the Rest Out Outreach, where she's one of the directors. Currently, the scope of the charity is UK and some African countries. She's also one of the facilitators of the On Christmas Day event. Um, Soki is an architect and also work in various roles within the safety, health, environment and quality department in the construction industry in the UK. Mm. She's the creative director of Soki, Soki Cooks, where she explores a fusion of African and intercontinental cuisines, art, flavors, and techniques. She offers commercial catering, decorations, event services. She's also a healthy um, recipe developer and a well-being well enthusiast. She loves working walking and she's in many group with that flair. She also loves meeting with people and traveling. Um, Soki's art yearns for our youth and children and young adults, wherever they are as she sees them as our responsibility and the direction to our future. I have um, the pleasure of inviting, We call her um, Sister Isoke. I've known her for quite a while. <laughs> and she's a woman with different hearts. You've seen her. She's an architect. She, if you go to her Facebook, she, uh, Soki Cooks, men, all those um, palatable, even the display enough makes you mouth watering. And it's, uh, I've, and she's just, she's, for me, she's like a, role model if i have to say that she's a role model to me i just look at her and I say how does she manage all these things that she does with her children and everything well i thank god for her 
And I, with pleasure, I welcome her to the Wholesome Parenting Community Hub. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Welcome, Ma. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wow, it's just been so interesting listening to everyone with a wealth of experience. I want to thank God so much for this opportunity to be in this uh, meeting today. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm learning a lot. We never stop learning, do we? And um, I want to thank you, dear sister, Pastor Shalako Yosi, for all that you are doing in this hub. Wow. And the people you are reaching through the wholesome uh, parenting community hub is awesome. Also, thank you to Sister Biola. Wow, we worked together many 20-something years ago in the mm -hmm. church. Sister mm -hmm. Funke, the same thing. We've mm -hmm. come a long way doing what we do. And mm -hmm. I, I begin to hear you and I, I just appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you, Ma. Thank you so much. Um, I also want to appreciate people who were invited and were able to make it to this meeting today. Uh, thank you so much. I will send the word far and wide and appreciate you for calling, coming in uh, and all. Um, I'm just going to go ahead with um, share my screen. I'm trying to get that to share my screen. Will you permit me to share my screen, please? Okay. Sorry about this taking a minute. Yeah. Which one is? Use it. Am I on? No. Uh, some technical <laughs> issues. Yeah, I know this, my first screen is a very, fairly uh, busy one. Um, men in the society all over the world expect to be seen as a responsible role model, as my sisters have mentioned in their talk. Hence, raising the boy, raising boys to be these responsible men is a task that is very, very important. Um, the government statistics show, sorry, I still need help with this. Yeah, when you look at these statistics, these are some of the things that will inform somebody like me on this task that is given um, of, of having four boys and you see all sorts that happen in the society. In the last hundred years, if you look at the statistics in the prison, we have in the 1900s, only about um, 10,000 male were in prison, but over hundred years it's gone up to 76,000 males in prison. That is mind blowing. And you look at for the girls, um, about 1,000, females in prison in the UK. And over the same hundred years, we have just, it has barely doubled, which is like emphasis. That tells me that emphasis should be put on training the boy child and laying a good foundation. Now, I, I these are some few quotes that makes me 
think and wonder. You know, Frederick Douglass says it is easier to build strong boys than to repair broken men. You know, there are many broken men out there. You know, I work in a male dominated industry and I see this all the time. Men virtually come to work crying. In the industry on a daily basis with 150 people on a particular site, I will, you have only like five women, sometimes three, sometimes just one, just only me. And I see cries and brokenness uh, due to what they have gone through in life. No, okay, Kahid Husseini also says, children aren't coloring books. You can't just fill them with your favorite colors. I know as a young mother with a young baby, a little boy, a toddler, you just want to make them do this, wear them lovely clothing and all that. It's far beyond that. The raising of a, a child, of a boy is far beyond just having some stuff put in them or and all that. It, in a few years, you find that they have their own minds and they begin to act on based on the information either from outside or otherwise. And I like this quote. It says, I'm not raising little boys. I'm raising future husbands, fathers, and God-fearing men. If we have the future in mind, I believe that will channel the way in which we will raise our boys. It's not just about the now. It's not just about the clothing, about the fun. That is good, but let's have future in mind when we do all this. Now, my main focus is on this scripture, um, this Bible verse, I am aware that there might be other people in this meeting who are not Christians, but for me, training up our children, our four boys, this is my base scripture. You ask me, is there a code? This is my code. You know, it talks about train up a child, the training in the way he should go. I have to know what way he should go so that when he is old, he will not depart from me. The training is paramount. It's not a one-off, it's a lifelong experience, you know. That brings me to the question of, uh, the other scripture is, uh, but a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. You find that in Proverbs uh, 29, 15b. That alone is like, no, I cannot be put to shame. I will do all that it takes to train up these ones in the way they should go, to equip them in the way they should go, and trusting that they will turn out all right. Now, the, um, um, I want to use this example of this lady in the Bible. Her name is Hannah. Uh, she was someone who was desperate for a child. And it so happened that it didn't come as soon as she got married and she will go pray, she will go cry. And what did she do? And she had a vow and said, my first child, I'm going to dedicate to God. I just want to bear children, you know? And that was what she did. She bought a man, a, a child called Samuel. And after winning the child, the child was handed over to the high priest to learn in the way he should go, you know. So that is it. Who is the trainer in this place? Who is the trainer of the child? I'll come back. I'll refer to Hannah a few more times as I go on. Now, this is a slide that should have come in earlier. You know, without proper training, we find that um, this happens in the society, which all, we all are aware of. The statistics from the prison, the divorce rate, all the crime rates and everything go up. And on top of it, it's not the girls, it's the boys. And as we have already heard today, the special uh, training is given to the girls, but sometimes the boys are just left to do their own thing. And the society who has no clue of where they are going trains them. 
So who is the trainer here? The trainer is the parent, you know, the parent is the primary trainer. And who are the parents? Could be the father and the mother, the guardian, the carer, the grandparents. These are all part of the primary trainer, you know. And of course, you cannot train the child alone, you know. You have support trainers along the line. You have the teachers, the spiritual leaders, the coaches, and all. Just like the slogan of uh, this community hub says, it takes a wholesome community to raise a wholesome child. The training is not you alone, but you as a parent here, you are the primary responsibility. It's your primary responsibility to train this child in the way he should go. How do you know the way he should go? I believe every child comes with their roadmap. You know, it comes with their road. If you are training somebody and you don't know the way they should go, how will you train them? You will train them based on what the society is saying. You will train them because of what is trending. But is that the way they should go? Just like Hannah, she went back to the Lord and asked, what way should this one go? In the Jewish society then, in the Jewish system, the thing is you dedicate the first child to God. Hannah went ahead to have many more children. You know, it's not a loss. So how do you know? You have four boys, you have six boys. How do you know the way it should go? Is it the same um, system that fits all? No. What is the way for each child? How should they go about being trained? The faith, that was what Hannah applied in her own time. We can also apply that. The personality of that child, you know, what traits come out? What's the flair? What, what comes out when it comes to the child? What, what do they gravitate towards? You know, the conception, what are events be, be, uh, around their conception that could inform you on the way they should go? I'll give an example of, of some of my children. One of them, when he was, when he was, um, when he was born, even before he was born, I got into football. I was sort of a football fanatic. Hey, I will watch any football. Then it was Arsenal, you know? And there was only one person that's on the pitch as far as I'm concerned. It was Thierry Henry. So after I had the baby and we are home during the period of winning and everything, this, we will sit together and start watching. And he doesn't know, I start screaming. And the baby also will start screaming over it. The, the, the passion for football was so great at that time. So from a young age, and God will show me, you know, this one is going to be amongst thousands of people. And I will see big stadium, it will be there, you know. But beyond that, I knew I had to do all that, all that work in the child to get him to that state. So when he gravitated towards football, wanting to go training for football, I wasn't going to say no. For another child, had too much energy. I say, hey, before this one kills me, I have to look for something he will do so that it, by the time he gets home, he is virtually zapped of the energy and can sleep and we can have some peace. You know, he went ahead in sports, in another form of sports, gymnastics, got to a level where he had got a gold for the county, which was good until had uh, some minor injury and changed into another sport. So the passion for all those was there. I remember also one of my children, one day I was as a two-year-old brushing the teeth and after brushing the teeth, I said, spit into the bowl, standing by the bowl, spit in the bowl. When the child spits out, the thing from brushing the teeth. It just flies all over the place. And I'm like, why is yours? Can't you target the ball? It just has so much power in the mouth. And I'm, okay, how, how can I channel that power? That strength of 
in the mouth. And I thought, okay, let's try instrument. Let's try something you can blow so that you can channel that into the instrument. And that's how we got into doing um, saxophone, you know. So every one of them, another who read, read the Bible and able to join different generations of things. And I'm like, he said, mom, can you see that this happened here, that happened there and put them together? I don't see it, but they saw it. And I knew that I have to work on that child in that area. Another will take things and in their play, throw things to the sibling. And it hits right in between the eyes. And I'm like, that is dangerous. How do you keep throwing things in between the eyes? Do you want to start playing that? So I knew that he, the, that child, he had targets. So, and I said, okay, rather than destroy other people, let's put you in something that, so along the line, it could be by faith, ruling conception, some things you have gone through as you watch the child and see things come out in their nature or sometimes uh, somebody from outside tells you. Another one was someone, uh, one of the children came recently and said, oh, I found my spot. And I was like, okay. He said, my teacher told me I'm really good at that. So I said, okay, good. We've been looking for this spot for quite a while now. Now we found it. Now we are going to put energy because we have family values. And I have from the beginning said, you must have one spot. Apart from swimming, which is compulsory, you must play one instrument and all that. Apart from all this, there are so many other values. So family value also come into play at this point. So I'm just going to move on from there. Identifying the way the child should go. It is not the same thing for every child. You have family values, but you need to identify the way that child should go. So the training, we have heard a lot from my sisters this morning about the training at home. A lot goes in into training the child at home for, with the primary trainer. A lot goes in. We cannot blame another person and say, ah, it's because it's what they are taught in school. They are in school for eight hours, hello, and they are at home for how many hours? 16 hours. And we want to put all the blame on the teacher. We want to put all the blame on somebody else. Let's take responsibility for this. My sisters have gone into doing the house chores. Same all here. We have them, everybody has a day of cooking. One of my sons in particular has chosen the diet for his own day of cooking. When we do the weekly shopping, you must have chips, nugget. His own is oven cooking. So when uh, on that day, you all know that that's what we are going to eat. Everything goes in the oven, it brings it out. And he has been consistent. I think he's not an expert. Even when the oven is not working well, he knows how to tweak things. So everybody has a portion in the house that they clean. I mean, I can't <laughs> clean them. And as they go older, the stage they are in, so many hormones flying all over the place sports people you understand what i'm saying you know they come with all sorts of uh, fragrances and all that personal hygiene has to be taught the grooming their social skills you find that in the uk from a young age um people are able to take their children to the place like the library and they have toddler groups uh, for a session one hour or so free and you are able to mix with other children from that young age. You are not keeping your child because ultimately this child has to live in a society. So from a young age, we'll groom them in things that needs to be done at home, in the grooming of, of themselves, personal hygiene and all, social skills, meeting with other people and knowing how to behave and all, in education, you know, career, where you have others helping you to bring out the best of your child while you are training. So that is the way to go, training to attain the way to go. So that when they grow up, when they get older, when they find themselves in whatever walks of life, they are able to cope. They are able to manage because they have 
all these life skills that they have developed. They are faith consistently for our children. We consistently take them to church. Not only to church, we have our devotions where they are put in response. Okay, it's your turn today. Everybody has a turn when they are all around. It's your turn to do this. Father would have sent the um, the information to them. We have a family WhatsApp page. Send the information today. Okay, you are doing that. You are doing that. Nobody's exempt. It's all part of the training and part of um, the development. And where you need help, we source for help. Get a trainer um, to help, whether it's in education or whether in sports activity or music or any other skill that we find that the child um, will be good at. It's along their training. That doesn't mean they are going to take all of it. Some of them might not play out till 20, 30 years time, but they already have that sort of skill in them. So what are the challenges we face in this journey? You know, especially for a boy, what are the challenges the boy will face? Peer pressure, this is it. This is where all these sort of ills in the society come in. You know, your, if your values and the family is not well defined, you find that they gravitate towards anything. They have to know who they are, what they are, what, why they are being taught in that way. You know, it, that alone builds their mind for going out, especially in the teenage years. In the little younger years, I know there are some younger ones that throw tantrums like no man business, you know, but when they are consistently taught in this way, time, you know, or not enough attention brings challenges. You don't have enough time for the child. Everybody's got to work. The bills are there. Somehow along the line, we have to balance this. You know, this is a primary uh, godly assignment that it's not everybody that can have this assignment. We thank God that you have it. So take it with all uh, importance and dedicate time to it. Lack of resources, like I mentioned, money, logistics. I remember well, a time we only, I only went into swimming just because they should have um, some skills. When they go on holidays, you are able to swim, not sit down there and do nothing. But it be became something else. It took over, almost took over our lives and started getting into competitive swimming, started getting into life-saving, going to sea and all that. And for all this, we were traveling all over, all over the UK, going for competitions and all that. It did do a lot with our money, with our resources, materials, getting the right costume, getting the right thing for the right occasion and all. If this is part of the assignment you are given, please embrace it. Trust God for the resources to be able to train that child in the way he should go. Sometimes you have, it's demotivating because um, you are not getting the expected results immediately. You know, it's uh, like, oh, I could, is this the way? Should we just forget it? We find that the, in schools in the UK, children are given opportunity as a tester per um, term to check on this form of music to another or sports. They do this, they, they do that, then they do that. You know, some of them might not pay up now. But later, it will come, you know, and they can also transfer that to their own children. So let's be encouraged to keep at it and not to quit. You know, like they say, quitters never win and winners never quit. So we stay on there and be there for them and applaud them and encourage them. That's how we overcome all these challenges. Affirm them, speak positive to them. Say, come on, you can do this. Yes, the last, the last tournament wasn't fantastic, but let's go for it. We are not going back now. You still want to do this. People will say things from outside and all that. Your, their colleagues will say stuff because they go through stuff, especially boys, you know, we go through stuff, but you, you, don't, you don't want to quit. You know, spend quality time, know them. I was um, talking with some guys at my workplace yesterday and I said, okay, guys, I'm having this talk tomorrow. What do you think? You know, all of them fathers and 
you could see all the ills in the society represented there. I think there were about eight of them, and all from different parts of of the of Europe: Irish, uh, Bulgaria, Romanian, and uh, Lithuanian, English, and here I am amongst them, all guys. And I said, "So, how how did you grow up? What was it in your home?" Everybody had something good to say about their growing up. But now, where are they? Second marriages. Most of them second or third marriage. Some of them single. What happened? What went wrong? You know, they are not there. One of them actually, really, I don't know how to handle this yet. I asked him, he's got two boys, three girls, two boys. I said, oh, so how was it? How is it with your boys? He said, one of them hates me. So that one is off. The other one, um, I don't know. Let's see what he turns out to be. Works in the works in, in, in London from Ireland, around in London for like three, three weeks or four weeks in a row, goes home, sees them for like a few hours because he's divorced. And how will you train the child if you do not spend quality time with that child? He doesn't even know who they are. They, are, they hate him. They don't like him. They want, don't want to be with daddy. Daddy is not a role model. This is all the narrative that we want to, we want to change by God's grace with all these sessions. Let's begin to change it. A sister of mine was talking to me and said, see, some of the men have no clue. They don't even have an idea of how to, because they themselves are not from a proper structured home. You know, can we begin to look into this and begin to speak into the society, have a voice, you know, in all this area so that we can change things. Someone shared with me that many years ago, women like you and I, you know, I know there are men here as well. Women like you and I came together in America and said, no, these boys, these men cannot continue like this. What did they do? They came in the Baptist faith, they did, uh, came and organized a group called RA, Royal Ambassadors, where they now groom boys and give them life skills, teach them the way they should go, consistently be there, have motivational um, 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 teachings and everything to, uh, uh, to equip them in the way they should go. Uh, you, so these are things we need to keep encouraging our boys. Some of them have even gone so far. I know along the line we mentioned things about black boys. Where I am at the moment, where I work in construction, all the laborers in the team are black boys. These are young boys between the ages of 20 and 24. All of them. Some of them have well skilled you know but they had no job i don't know how to begin to address that some of them low self-esteem some of them maybe because of the upbringing like we watched in that clip where they have how the way they have been brought up can we begin to change this narrative because i look at them i say you are worth more than this you can do better with your life than this you know all those training should not be in vain you know, so as we begin to speak out and begin to encourage these people, I hope we'll have a positive uh, turnaround in the, in the society. Now, this task of grooming the boy, let's see beyond the boy. Let's see the man, the father, the, the leader of tomorrow. When we have that in focus, that will help us to know the way it should go. It is easier to build strong boys for those that have the young ones than to repair broken men. I see men weak. I see their heart torn. They come to work and they are totally shattered. Um, the Lord will help us to do what we have to do as parents, as aunties, as uncles, as fathers, even in this light, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Ma.
I'm still trying to soak in everything you said. I've written a lot, but I just can't write everything. Um, foundation, that's the one thing she's mentioned. Foundation is very crucial. The Bible says that if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And then raising children with the future in mind, we have to be intentional about raising our children. She gave the example of Anna. She had intention for that boy, Samuel, that Lord, if you give me this child, I'll give him back to you. It was a vow, but it was intentional and she did it. And then also she said that the parents are the primary trainer for every child. And I remember when I was young, when you do something wrong and my parents, was, my mother would say, didn't they teach you at school? Didn't they teach you at school? It's not the teacher that will teach us, it's the parent. It's the parent that is responsible for the uh, life skills that each child will exhibit. Yes, we do have the support um, trainers like the teachers and everything, but the main person is the parent. And she also said, how do you train? And this for me is a uh, eye opener with the things she said. She said from conception, like the thing she said about football craving and how she linked it to the child. Even God giving her the visions and everything. And then the one about the spitting. Can you, you see, sometimes you say, God, show me what this child will be. It was just that simple thing that God just um, opened her eyes to see that this child that can spit and is going all ways, put it to use. And that's how he starts to um, play an instrument. And then the one that was, when she said the one about throwing that and aiming and eating the target, I just, I, I had to laugh. I because know. if it was any other person, they would start beating the child. I use this, 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 that, that, that. But she saw it as, she channeled it into something else. So that's the thing we need to pick from this. When you see a child doing this, something like this, you need to channel it in the right direction. I remember when my um, first one was, um, was a baby, he was in his high chair and then he would throw his spoon and then put it on the floor. I will pick it and then he will throw it back again. After a while, I got tired and I said, do you know what, let's just stay there. If I had known, I would know that this boy was aiming for something and I would have channeled it in the right direction. This is where we need information. This is where we need information. And then watching the, uh, the nature of the child is important. Yes, and sometimes as parents, because of the pressure and everything, we might not be aware of these things. And like she said, the surrounding where the child grows up also matters. Sometimes most of us are stressed. We, are, we have so many, thinking about so many things, but I pray that God will give us that listening ears to learn what to see in this child and to channel it in the right direction. She also talked about um, parents being the primary um, carer and should take responsibility. It's not the teacher, it's not just the teachers. It's not the Sunday school teacher. Many of us are working in the Sunday school um, department. We, are, we, we see the lapses in parents thinking that it's, a parent, uh, it's at Sunday school that you learn about Jesus. No, it starts from the home. You learn about Jesus from the home. The two, two minutes prayer you do or praying together, all those kind of things. And then she talked about um, <laughs> personal hygiene. I was speaking to my son today. I said, tell me, do you think uh, we were having a discussion that should boys be raised differently? He said, no, but you know what? I think yes. I said, in what areas? And he mentioned personal hygiene. So when <laughs> he says, okay, said that, I just had to laugh. I just had to laugh. And then also the challenges, yeah, the peer pressure is there. And I think Sister Biola also mentioned some, something about being watchful who your children mix with. You have to be very, very careful. I remember a friend of mine when we were in uni, we were in uni and when she's going out, our father would say, write the name of the person you are going to visit, their address and their phone number. We used to laugh then, but do you know what? Our father was being watchful. So that if anything happens, he knows where she is and everything. So when I when when I remember that, and I also say to my son that give the address and everything, it's like, mom, 
No, I, I won't do that. And then I explained to him, this is why we do these things. We need to be careful who um, our children mix with. It tells a lot. It tells a lot. It's a uh, love um, association. And then she talked about the overcoming challenges. Uh, we can do it. Yeah, the challenges are there, but we can do it. The affirmation, the quality time and everything. I don't want to say everything. It's, it, we'll watch the video later. Like I said, I'm still absorbing everything she said. I'm just soaking it in. So does anyone have any questions? Um, anything you want to say that you've picked up from um, the speak, first speaker, Sister Bella, um, um, Sister Dioye and Sister Isoke, if you can please, you can either um, write it down in the chat box or just feel free or mute your device and ask questions. There's a lot, there's a lot. I'm, I'm still like writing and everything, but I know that I'm going to go back to the video and listen and listen and listen again, because like she said, she said, we are all still learning. So any questions or observation or anything anyone has wants to say, please feel free. We all still are um, drinking in, drinking it in. Please feel free. Please feel free. Okay, I have one question. Shouting. How can we, as parents, when they were younger, yes, I used to do that a lot. But like we said, like we said, we are all learning. So my sister, how can we deal with that area? You know, out of frustration, like um, Sister Funke said something about observation and I just put observation 101. Every boy needs to be taught that thing. That when you see something on the floor, pick it up and not just walk by it. Sometimes I just think, is it just me that I'm seeing something on the floor, I pick it up and other, my they go past it and they don't pick it up. Is it me or am I? How, how do we, uh, it's, it's a challenge for some of us. Can you please address that for us, ma'am? Is that me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I'll tell you a little story that my husband often tells uh, the children and all of us. There was this young fellow that um, the dad insisted anytime he saw something, pick it up, pick it up. You know, he wanted it to be a second nature to him. And he, of course, like every young person, he would wonder why, you know, out of sort of frustration or just not being told again to do it, he just does it so that dad does not come and start telling him, did you see that? Why did you go past that? Uh, you know, pick it up and all that. So one day he went for this um, interview and and the whole interview from getting it was a setup. The clock was put wrongly. Magazines were all over the place. Things were just not arranged. And there were two or three other people before him at the interview, well-dressed, everybody sitting down, waiting to be called in for the interview. And when he came in, because it was now his second nature, he just started putting things in order was wondering why are, the, why are the magazines all over the place? He put them tidily away. He looked at the other side. Why is that clock bent that way? He did it. Every scenario that was set up without his knowing, he fixed everything and sat down for the interview. So when he got into the interview, um, his, the interviewer said, oh, the interview is done. He said, what do you mean? I've just come for the interview. He was thinking, the others have been, have already taken the place or whatever. He said, no, you've done the interview. He said, how? And he said, you've got the job. You know, they are looking for the problem solving skill. It starts from little. Being sensitive, being empathetic, being there for things, aware of things that go on around, whether it's a boy or a girl. Well, both of them. And that was how he got, got the job. Immediately he stepped out of that place, he called his father and said, dad, look at what happened and all. So all those training, rumming things into their ears is not in vain. We just have to keep doing it, keep saying it, and someday it now becomes their second nature. Along the line, there are things you have said over time. 
without shouting. Giving example like this, okay, maybe shouting has no help. Then why don't you talk, have a conversation, have a story around it? You know, I used to, when my boys, the grown up ones, when they, you know, why are you this? When they do their hand like this, oh dear. I mean, they, they are big. <laughs> what do I think I want to do? It's not like the two or three year old anymore. So yeah, just having the conversation, saying it in a different way, rather than the way we used to do it before, making them aware that that will help. When you know the why, why you are doing something, you will begin to do it differently. You know, it's just like being on the on my in my building site, there are things. I don't know what you are told is that don't walk by. If misses you, it might not miss the next person. It's your responsibility and the responsibility of everyone. So that is a they don't walk by. Just keep talking and having a conversation. Okay, thank you, Ma. We have um, more questions. How different was the training given to Samuel Anna's sons, Anna's son versus Eli's two sons? They were both trained by Eli, but the outcome were different. Sometimes I think uh, some things come with the roadmap inside of the child. That mother, Hannah, has put in so much. She had prayed. She's been humiliated and she prayed and all that. I'm not saying Mrs. Eli did not pray, but somehow along the line, you find that some values were already in that child. Hopefully that's what made the difference, you know? So Eli's son turning out the way they turned out, they just took it for granted because they are there. They are there in the, in the temple, you know? But he had a mission. It was a child sent on a mission with a target. It is an arrow in the hands of the, of the mother that was shot out, I know. Maybe that is why they turned out differently, even though they are in the same condition. Every child turns out differently, even though they are from the same womb, they are groomed in the same family, they turn out a bit differently. But these are the core values we want to instill on them. Yes. In them. Yes, that's quite true. Because some, if you look at the nature of um, Eli, even when his sons were doing those things, I'm not sure there was a time, even if he had a time and he told them to stop and they didn't stop, then he stopped mm. um, questioning or telling them to not to do the, those um, things that they were doing. So it's like you said, the core value of the family. He could have dealt with them. He was a priest. He, is a fa he was a father, but he didn't. He was just laissez fair about it that they'll become mm. what they want to become. But with Samuel, it was a different thing. Maybe he had realized his mistakes with his children and then he was trying to relieve, it, relieve the best in Samuel. But then we never get to know. So, and then sometimes people in high positions too, they kind of let their children just go the way they want to go. That after all, they are the bishop's son, they are the president's son, let them do whatever they like. But no, even in a place of position, your children come first, you do the training first with them before you do um, others, even I'm sure most of us on the school teachers and even teachers, I always say something that a child of a, the, the, uh, the children of a teacher can never fail because that woman will have taught them or the man will have taught them well before they now go to school. And my husband used to say that, that there was this um, French teacher in their school that the child will always come first uh, that, I'm, that he was sure that something was going on. I said, no. Is the, is the teacher's child can never fail because you would have taught that person well. So it's how you bring up your own child, no matter your position, if you're high up or low or, or whatever. And then um, next question, Ma. I'm reading, um, how do we help our sons deal with the pressure that comes from the society? Facilitate, sorry, Ma, before you go, facilitate your sister Biola and um, sister Funke, Mommy Babs, please to um, put in your contributions also. But how do we help our sons deal with the pressure that comes from the society? Um, the pressures will always be there. Be a friend to your son. What I, I in my discuss with uh, my colleagues yesterday, there was one who was too happy. You know, when you start talking family, he was too happy to show me the picture of his son. He has one son, that one child. Picture of his son, he's a biker. How he would take the son biking 
and you could see that that father has time for that son. You spend quality time with the son. You are able to rub minds together. You go places together. Have boy activities, if there's anything like that, together, like going fishing. You like speed cars, going racing. You going, you know, com conversation, man conversation, especially when they, if you start it from little, you are able to continue that. I was speaking to a, a, a lady some time ago, and it was like things were going on in the family, and the dad called the son, and there was no conversation. Hello, are you okay? Yes. How is everything going? Fine. Okay. Do you have anything to say? No. Because there was no conversation over time. Some conversation can be heated, but at least you are having that. Another person I spoke with yesterday said, oh, me and my brother is seven years in between. He used to do things to me, tell me to stay under the bed and all those things. But it was all part of their growing up. You know, they were happy to meet after two and a half years because of the pandemic. And it was like, but when things, when I was in school, I was very naughty. He was my big brother taking care of me, being there for me. You know, this is the communication. Communication is key everywhere. And have creating the time to have a conversation. Talk to their talk talk their topics, you know, hear where they are coming from and guide them in the way they should go. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And, um, okay, this is just a, a appreciation. Thank you so much for this meeting. There's so much to learn from. I do agree with that. Then um, someone said, suggestion, ma'am. Shouting in itself is not bad. Harsh words could be what the boy needs to sit, to sit up. The Bible says that David never said a harsh word to his children look what they did to him mm. okay sister funka you're raising up your hands do you want to take that um well, i want to take maybe two i'll just talk quickly about one or two questions that have been answered if you don't mind and talk about this one the shouting as well please pardon me i won't be able to put my camera on because i'm in a Please, I had to leave the meeting because I was getting into this. Um, one thing I wanted to say about the ALA thing, one thing we, oh, sorry, apologies. Thank you for the privilege. I really appreciate you. And thank you for allowing me to send in just a video rather than the person. That's okay. God bless you. Sabiola, God bless you. I appreciate you both. And thank you to the whole group for giving thank us you. the privilege. Thank um, you, ma'am. One thing, uh, thank you, <laughs> I wanted to pick up on is the ALA, ALA thing. You know what we do mostly with our children? The privilege. Sometimes this attitude of um, it, is, it is my child and we let them get away with everything, especially people that have other people's children living with them in our culture. We do that a lot and tight. Most of the children that are actually living with another family get more drained, get more disciplined and they come out better. Mm -hmm. I'm just... As, that's what I'll quickly pick on that. And also, like my sister said, is the DNA as well. But sometimes the DNA might be there. But when you think this is my house, I do as I please, you end up mostly being a, a, a child that takes everything for advantage and my right. And also when we come back to talk about shouting, I don't, I don't think I shout mostly at my children, but I have a very stunt control especially when they were younger. Even me appearing at all alone, we scared the hell out of some children. Because what I've done from the beginning, from when they were little, this is where we miss it. When a child is three months, you can, you can deal with that child. When a child is one month, you can control and deal with that child. You can instill discipline from when a child, you've given back to a child, that is me. As soon as my child, children are born, even in the stomach, I tell them to start, stop kicking me. So you train a child right from the beginning. When a child kicks me, I'm pregnant. I tap back and say, stop kicking me. You train, you talk, you deal with a child right from the beginning so that by the time they are like one year old, you have instilled discipline. But most of the time we wait till they're talking back before we start disciplining them. So when we now start at the end of the day, it's frustrating. That is where the shouting comes in. And we come to shout, stop it. 
because they're not used to, even you look, when I look at children, not only my child even, they will stop what they're doing because they know my values. You need to instill your values. And I think that is where the shouting comes in. And most of the time I have two children. My son, if I say jump, he will ask me how high. If I tell my daughter jump, she will ask me what for. So that is where you study your children. If I shout at my daughter, she'll say to you, you're shouting, what for? If I shout at my son, it would disappear and hide for a day. So you need to study your children. You need to know as well, shouting does not work for every child. Some mm -hmm. children would challenge you. And don't be, don't be kind of um, dis feel disrespected if they challenge you. It's because you have not actually imputed that work from the beginning and the Lord will help us. For those of us that still have younger children, you're still privileged, please take advantage of it. Like Sister Isoke was saying, I'm, I'm sure Stabiela will say, if I talk to this one now till I'm blue in the face, they're grown up. It's whatever we instill in them then that is now coming up. But if you're still privileged, you have younger children, please start working on them. The Lord will help us. Amen. Can I just chip in something? Someone was sharing with me, uh, a sister of mine, that um, where she lived, there were these little, these other people in the same premises, and um, a boy of about eleven years that had two, that has two sisters, and anytime the girls did something, before you know, he's punching them, he's telling them off, and screaming and punching them and she was like really what is this and you can begin to escalate that to when they grow up when they are now on their own you know that is sign of abuse right there and then and she went to the boy and said you know don't beat those girls again because if you grow up thinking that girls are punching back you are going to do it to another person's daughter in your care don't beat those boys, uh, those girls again, you know. So we also need to be sensitive to all this thing. Like Sister Funke said, a baby kicking you. Ah, naturally, you say, wow, kicking, wow, bring it on. The baby is active. But when the kicking becomes something else, right from there and there, you speak to this situation. We should be, uh, um, like, it takes a wholesome community. We are not just there for ourselves. It is more difficult in this part of the world to put your mouth in another person's stuff. But somehow along the line, as we have the chance, we should do our bit of correcting uh, people and just speaking, finding a way to say these things to people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you very much, Ma. Um, I think we've dealt with this. Um, the question is, how much more should have Eli dealt with his sons? Like um, Sister Funke said, the, I call, she's called it the privilege syndrome. Yes, you don't have any privilege, privilege as a... Uh, we can just take the example of the um, the two sons. One that wanted his um, inheritance there and then, and the one that had to work for it. It just shows that you need to deal with children individually. Uh, another observation, so impactful. Thank you so much has been on and off as was driving. Okay, we we'll love the recording. The recording will be on our YouTube channel. So um, I think there's one more. I'm not sure I can see this. Okay, I can't see that message, but I believe we have, whatever questions we have, we can reach out. We're there mm -hmm. on um, on all our um, social media. Before sorry, we, sorry. sorry special luck, but I just have a little, um one thing to say okay. to our parents because um wasn't a few years ago when, because my son have a friend that um he normally help um his friends and children you know she brought he brought them here and that day I, you know i was asking the boy oh how are you how's your mom he said fine and oh how's, how's your dad he said oh he's, he doesn't exist so that's very shocking you know that is why we have to be very, very careful of what we're saying in the presence of the children. Because they, when they go out, you know, th th things happen outside like, you know, like that. And it's not good. It's not good. We have to be very, very careful of what to say, especially the little ones. Hmm. So that's what I just wanted to add to that. Thank you very much, Ma. That is 
quite important. We should watch what we say to those children mm -hmm. because like sponge, they're soaking what we say. And we, and, and when, when you hear, it's easy to know what is being said at home because the children will react when you tell yeah. them something. And their reply, we just let you know that something has been said at home. The child mm -hmm. picks it up and is now saying it. So we really mm -hmm. need to be careful what we say. Thank you very much, Ma, for that um, observation. Uh, we, we are supposed to stop now, but we can't go without praying. We need to pray. Um, before this event, um, myself and um, Sister Soke, we prayed, and even while praying, we were like, this is not the end to it. There's so much more that we can pray about. So I've just picked up a few um, um, topics like a uh, prayer point, sorry, awareness for parents. We need to be aware as parents. The world is changing. Our children are changing. They are changing from state, one state to the other before they were toddlers, now children. Children will become teenagers. Teenagers will become young adults. And young adults will be adults. So we, we need to be aware. And then have time for our children. That cannot be overemphasized. We need to have time for this children. Even if, you're, if your child is 50 year old, you still create that time for that child. Because number one, you are the primary caregiver uh, and you are the person that is responsible for bringing that child to the world. And you have a responsibility, not just to that child, but to God who has given you that child. And then the way our communication with the child, especially permit me to say fathers, I know that sometimes men, we women will go, we want to know the how, the when, the this, the this, the that. And the men are like, are you okay? You're okay, that's it. But there might be a lot going on. We need to communicate effectively with our children. Communication is both ways. How you communicate to your children, how they communicate to you. Are you the kind of person that you, sometimes it's good, you walk into the room and everybody just scatter. They are like, yay. Yeah. That is around and they so it might be good because we might be doing something wrong and then when they see you they kind of run for their dear lives and then we also have, like um, my sister mentioned the privilege syndrome how many of us have other children come into our home and maybe even even if he's serving food because they are your children you now give them two pieces of meat and the one that has come you now give them one what does that show it's in it, what what does that say to that child that you've given the one meat and the other your children your children will feel that yes this is my home i can do whatever i like but what if that your child now goes to another person's child and they give him one piece of meat and they have about 10 how would that child feel so we need to teach train our children well and then also discipline starts from this i put discipline starts from the start the start is from the womb from the womb to the birth, birth and for, for as long as you live. So we are going to quickly pray individually, collectively. Let's just put all these challenges before our God. He's the father of all fathers. He's the one that can help us. Sometimes we don't even know how. We are going to ask him to open our eyes, help us to communicate better as parents, help us as parents to, 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 to learn to listen to our children. Help us with our frustration, even maybe it's a place of work, business, money, all these things. They keep crowding in, wanting us to uh, take, keep our focus away from what we should be doing. But we are going to pray for God's mercy and his divine enablement because on our own, we cannot do it. So let's just take a few um, seconds, I'll say, not or one minute to just pray. Let's put all our challenges before God. Maybe you are here, even if you have a prayer point. Join in this prayer now, trusting that God sees our hearts, he knows our issues, he knows our problems, and will help us. Maybe you have that child that's very challenging, you don't even know what to do about that child. But with God, nothing is impossible. Just lay it before God, lay it before God's altar. Pray, trust God. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Can you please round up, Mass? That's okay. The prayer.
Our Father in heaven, we just thank you for this session. We thank you for all that you have dropped in our hearts concerning training our children and especially raising our voice, oh God. We just pray, Heavenly Father, as this word has gone out, it has dwelt on fertile ground in our hearts and we have the energy to go forth and bring it um, and activate it and bring it to pass in the lives of our children in Jesus' name. That this faith we got here, we will put works to it and it will bring forth the expected outcome in the lives of all our men in the name of Jesus. That Lord, this will not be the end of it. We will continue. We'll continue in this work. We'll continue in this process, in this journey as we see you change the statistics in the world, in the prisons, in the case of divorces, in leadership, in drugs and alcohol, we begin to see all those figures go down in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Let righteousness exalt the nation. Let it exalt our family. Let it exalt our voice. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen, amen. 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 Thank you, everyone, for joining today's amen. session. Special thank you to Sister Viola. Thank you for your video. Thank you for all that um, wealth of wisdom. Thank you for um, Sister Funke. Thank you for your views. Thank you for even giving us another dimension to parenting. And also, thank amen. you, my dear sisters. That's okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the time mm -hmm. taken to even set up everything, the statistics, everything that your research and everything. We are so mm -hmm. grateful. Thank you for even opening our eyes to a, 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 another aspect. I've learned that thing about um, watching the child now and challenging the channeling things in the right um, perspective. I also want to thank everyone for joining. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for taking this time out. I know mm -hmm. Saturdays are very precious. I don't joke with my mm -hmm. Saturdays, but this is needful. And we pray that it will, if, jo, not jo, it, it will be, it will help every one of us, not mm -hmm. even those who are going to join later that mm. whatever we've learned will be challenged by what we've discussed today and we will do something positive about it. Maybe you are here, you are thinking, oh, what should I do? What can I do? Even impacting your knowledge, your wealth of knowledge to children around, around you. Maybe starting, like um, my sister mentioned something about the royal ambassadors. Even if it's just you starting or joining other people, coming together, making a change in our society. You know, it takes a whole community to raise up just one child, not even the whole, the whole children in the world, just one child. It takes a whole um, community. So please, please do something about what you've learned today. Don't sit on it. Don't just put it aside. God is calling you to do something to make a change in the life of a child. And um, also please do follow us on our social media for those of us that um, want to... Um, Maybe you joined later on. This video will be posted later today on our um, YouTube channel, Wholesome Parenting Community Platform. And also we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You, um, and also we also have a um, WhatsApp group. If you'd like to facilitate a session, please send a message or email Wholesome Parenting Community Hub at gmail.com. Wholesome Parenting Community Hub, one word. We also encourage our support our members in their businesses by promoting their entrepreneurship business initiative on our social media platform. So if you're a member, if you join us, if you have a business or anything that you want to put out there, we'll do it free of charge. No, um, no um, fee or anything. And by God's grace next month, we'll have another interesting session. So please do join us. Um, our upcoming events will be on our social media. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Sorry we've overshot our time, but it was very needful. I'm so grateful for everyone joining. God bless you. God keep you and God cause his face to shine upon you and be with you and your children. You will be excellent um, parents to your children. God will even make your children to be greater far greater mm. than you. They will go beyond mm. the norm. They will stand mm. in their generation like the Daniels mm. of old, like the Deborah mm. of old, like the Esther of old. God will do wonderful things in the lives of your children mm. and children's mm. children in Jesus' name. Thank you so mm. much. God bless Thank you. you.
Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome Thank session. You. Thank 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 you